Greetings, everyone. Come sit in the seat. I want you to sit right here and listen to what I got to say to you. Before I go any further, I just want to repeat the quote. Don't listen to the noise in the market. Just make sure you're getting the cart change. And I'm paraphrasing. May repeat. Don't listen to the noise in the market. Just watch out for the correct change. I think you could apply that to every area of your life. And as things stand um, with our community, and I put that in quotation because there really isn't much of a community as far as our people are concerned. Sometimes when you speak the truth, you make enemies for yourself. But if the truth is not a shield to which you are prepared to wear, then I don't know what is the point of living. Now, some of you have sent me topics that you want me to talk about and sometimes it takes a while before I respond because I like to do things according to the spirit when the spirit says now I speak on it and some of the topics are things that I've talked about before but I from time to time delete videos or sometimes I don't remember what I title it and so I'll go back and repeat for those who ask so in this video, I'm going to talk about a few things. You know, we saw an uproar in Jamaica as it relates to the government coming out to tell you what their plans were in terms of giving themselves exorbitant pay hikes. And the people from around the diaspora and in Jamaica really made their voices heard. And the leader came out to say, I heard you. And what the takeaway is from that, and the people have missed and will continue to miss, is that every time the people speak, when the people get pushed to the brink and they speak, these ones are cowards. They have to back down. If you can look at history, if you can look at you know, certain historical events, you will see that the people have never lost the power. They have rescinded it. So once you realize that the power is in your hand and you remove fear, you can accomplish anything. You can get rid of people in your life that does not mean you any good. So when the people do find the power and recognize that the one has no power against millions. They somehow manage to show their hand and all these people have to do, because I think it is a trauma that is within our race. Someone just has to say, I'm sorry, and you're good to go. There are times in life when certain things happen to us. Sorry is not good enough. If they say sorry, good for you. But that doesn't change the fact that I have opened my eyes and I have finally listened to you and I believe you. So I don't know why the people in Jamaica would hear this man say, I don't, I will not take any payment. I will not, you know, include this raise in my, you know, on my salary. What have the other members done? to receive a dime in increase because if you're not performing therefore you have no right to claim any raise your raise should be based on your performance so you know they really take people for a fool and if truth be told the people are a fool to be honest with you if they accept that at this point people don't realize that you don't have to wait for election to get rid of somebody you just get to the point where you say, okay, I had enough. I'm going to leave that. 
But before I do, uh, I would never go out and march and protest on behalf of any black person unless that is my birth, my the one I give birth to, or the partner that I am joined at the hip with. But I would never do that. It's not worth it for me. All right? Now, to segue into this section of this video, I, I, you need to sit on the counselor's chair and listen carefully because I speak through experience. A young lady reached out to tell me that she is in the United States of America for 10 years. And in the 10 years that she's been in the United States of America, she's been responsible for her mother and her children, her uncle, her cousins, and all the other relatives. There was always something going on, whether it be death, whether it be it's a child is born, whether it be somebody has to go to school or sickness, there was always something and keep in mind that this young lady left jamaica when she was 16 she is now 26 and she says i have a pair of jog joggers a pair of running shoes and i have one flat black shoes that i wear to work and in my closet i have a few pairs of tights i have a jeans jacket and I have three sweat tops and some t-shirts. That's all she owns in terms of her clothing. Because the need of her family is so great, our relatives, because she has no children. She's not married. Uh, she's going to school and she's doing med you know, menial work here and there, trying to make ends meet. In all this time, as she's pushing for a better life, she said that there are times when she'd want to pamper herself to go out and perhaps get some braids because she wears her hair natural. But there's never enough money. There is always something going on with her family to the point now at 10 years later, if she gets something for herself, she feels guilty. Young lady, I can completely relate to you. And I completely understand what you're saying. But I'm going to tell you this. Stop listening to the noise in the market. Hmm? Pay attention to the correct change. Because if you don't, before you know it, you will spend 50 years in the United States of America and never achieve anything, even when you have a great career. The need of people will always increase. People will always want things. People will always have drama in their life. People will always have, you know, all kinds of, you know, so-called bad luck. A lot of us have gone through this. We've gone through a series of attacks. As individuals and if you are the kind of person who have had to endure all kinds of things and while you are helping people with the goodness of your heart and because you love them but they never call to ask you how you are or if you try telling them that life is hard with you they don't get it they don't understand or they don't care so there comes a time when you have to say to yourself can I build someone and not build myself? I can speak as an elder person to say that I have taken out three loans to build myself. And it never benefited me because what I sent was stolen and whatever was used is taken. And if you're waiting for conscience from loved ones and blood relatives in our race good luck to you because remember within our dna lies trauma 
and the trauma that is within us, it's hardened us. It's, we're like these turtles walking around with these tough shells. People are just doing what they need to do to, to, to survive. And so you, you don't fight somebody's survival mechanism or, or mode. You just have to do the same. So as I started out talking about some political things, these individuals have it in their spirit to latch on to you and to seduce and reduce your worth. And so you can't get mad at them. You have to get mad at yourself. Get righteously angry with yourself to say, you know what? I have kindness. I have goodness in me. You want to kick yourself when you see that you, you have a bleeding heart for people. But at the end of the day, what do you have to show for yourself? What is, what is it? You don't want to be a, a middle-aged woman and look back at your life and see, oh, what have I accomplished even though I've worked so hard? And you can't reach out to these ones because, you see, when you finally get it right, and you will get it right, to start prioritizing yourself, just say no. The first time you say no, it will be the most difficult thing that you would ever do. You'll be torn up. I remember people calling me collect. Back in the day, you know, there was this phone booth and it seemed like it had demons so whenever these people are passing these phone booths they would be so lured to it to call me collect and as a young girl with two small children and no support from any man going to school and doing what I needed to do to take care of my children the relatives of these ones would call me collect and I remember when the phone bill comes it would be a problem and I remember telling an older woman, you know, and she said, just say no. It was the most difficult thing for me to do, to say no. When I eventually said no, I felt so bad. I called her for support, moral support. I felt guilty. People were calling me, collect to say, I'm going to the beach. And she said to me, you better learn how to leave your conscience and Bring your bad words. I thought it was so funny when she said that. But it took me many years. Many, many years. Until my partner started teaching me some things. I learned a lot from him. Oh, I feel so guilty when I say no. And that's what's happening to you, young lady. You know, uncle, grandma, mom, you know. It's going to be up to you. I can't tell you what to do when it comes to your relatives or, you know, your family. You ultimately know what you need to do. That's why you're reaching out. That's why you're crying. It broke my heart when I heard you crying that I can't buy an underwear for myself because these people are so ever consuming. They're always needing. And now you get to the point where you love for them is turning to hate. Whoa. You don't hate them. You're just angry and you're hurt that you can't do more. And that the more you try to do for them, the more you realize you're reducing your own worth. Listen to me. They're going to love you. Whether you give them financial support or otherwise, if you don't have it for yourself, what you're essentially doing is bleeding. And unless they're vampires, and even if they are, they have to go feed somewhere else. You're going to have to take care of yourself because if you're not healthy and you clearly aren't healthy, your mental health is now suffering because the burden is now too overwhelming. Then if I find myself in that situation, all you got to do is stop. And it's not that simple. I get it. Sometimes you just have to change your number just to recalculate. You just have to distance yourself you're not responsible for your mother's children or their children you are not a mother you are a young girl and if you really want to help your family then set up yourself in a way set up yourself in a way where you have your education you know you have some assets you're doing something for yourself so you can then you know maybe sponsor somebody or maybe give someone a start or something afterwards can't help people until you help yourself listen i am only speaking 
this way because this is what you need to hear. I wish somebody had said that to me. And I'm going to say that I'm not different from you. A lot of persons that are going to listen to this video are going to relate to that situation. But a lot of us who can relate can tell you that the ones we have been so dedicated to, the ones we felt like we had to be there for, don't remember us now. Some of them carry real hatred for us now. And at the end of the day, you say, well, why was I doing all of that? Your parents, your mom and your dad, if they have raised you, even if they're not perfect and you're in a position where you can assist, especially if they're elderly or they're sick and you can help, I say, do what you can and ask for help. Ask the universe to say, if this is your will for me to take care of this need, please provide it for me. But if you're not in a position to do it, there's nothing you can do. Say no. One of the hardest words to say is no. But unless you say no, you will never come to anything. You will stay in the United States of America for the next 40 years and be renting somebody's room somewhere that looks like a cupboard or a closet. And these ones don't care because when you say no, they're going to be okay. They're just going to find another outlet. You know, the parasitic nature of some people, they will find another host to latch on to. They won't remember you. And that part is going to be heartbreaking. Let me tell you something. There are individuals that used to call me and say, oh, I love you. Once my father died and I was no longer sending my money to Jamaica, I never heard from those people again. Never heard from them. Never, I, no more I love, love yous. So people will only tell you they love you when they want something from you. A lot of persons, I'm not saying everyone. People who are takers have the ability to charm you. They know how to say the right word until you say no. I listened to your cries. I saw how broken you were. I saw how torn you were between doing what is right for yourself and what is right for other people. It's not wrong or selfish to put yourself first. I spent many years, when I say many years, answering other person's emergencies. That means credit card. That means overdraft. That means borrowing from my children. Where are they now? Hmm? Some of them are actually my enemies today. Some of them I would be watching, looking behind me, looking over my shoulder. They would harm me. And I've reached out um, sometimes in the past in tears. A person just, just says to me, oh no, I can't. Just asking for a simple question. I need a direction something to do with the bank. And it was a question from somebody who could say, let me get back to you. And the person says, go to a stranger to get the answer. <laughs> wow. Let me tell you something. Love yourself, young lady. Take care of you. The very people who are takers, they love people. You see, these individuals who want to take everything from you and has no empathy, no sympathy. They don't care what's happening in your life. They never call you to ask you how you are. And if you try to tell them about your problems, that phone call is shortened. They don't want to hear you. These type of people will always gravitate towards wealthy people 
who don't do anything for them and they'll be loyal and ever forgiving of these ones but when they see you have this spirit where you want to just put yourself at the end they see these ones will destroy you you have to be so hardened you, we start saying, no, they'll be angry at first. But when they look and see you amass your wealth, they'll come around. And all of a sudden, when you're not doing anything for, for them, they will respect you. I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking through experience. So when you eventually say no, which is what you're afraid to say, you'd rather go bankrupt you rather be naked you rather be hungry because you've said that there are times when you're hungry and the money you were supposed to use to get some groceries to last you for the week is what you sent to them so anyone who take your grocery money even after you tell them this is this was money i needed for my food and they take it in jamaica you can take a pot and put soil in it and plant some tomatoes and go sell it. You can dig up a little space, even if you don't have a big space. Even if you live in an apartment. And let me tell you, I've lived in an apartment and my partner have planted all kinds of vegetable. When you look at our, gar our, our balcony, it looks like a little oasis. There is really no excuse for someone to drain your energy drain your finances and at this point they can do whatever they want to do it benefits them it's up to you to protect what you work hard for to build yourself can't wait for people to have conscience for you or be empathetic towards you when you don't have any empathy for your own self so I understand where you are and I just want to let you know that you are me I see myself in you and I know it's not easy to change when we are loving people in the past when people used to talk to me about it older women I used to get upset and I used to say why can't I allow myself to be kind why people have to abuse my kindness I was so hurt and she always said to me you'll see and trust me i saw there's an energy that is in money that you have to understand and it absorbs and it seduces and it reduces And in the hand of certain people, let me tell you, it becomes evil. So money is great. Don't get me wrong. But when you exchange that money, when you take it out of your hand and you give it to persons who have the wrong energy, that money becomes a curse to you. The very ones who took your money saying that they're in need will take it and do evil with it. And it, instead of it, been a blessing to you it becomes a curse i saw a video recently with a man saying that during the pandemic his life was better because he told his family that he was dead and they sent money for funeral and while some people laugh and had such an awesome time in the comment section and say yeah they will they will not send money for you unless you're dead they fail to realize that that individual might have been a loving caring person and this person recognized that and see it as a witness and trick the person. The person said, I used the funeral money to buy this truck and to buy jewelry. OMG. I can't imagine how horrible that person feels. But if you don't learn one way, you're going to learn another way. And you, young lady, you'll remember this response. And you have two choices. You can wait until you're fully broken. Or you can learn now and start turning the bend 
and start investing in yourself. There's something missing when we want to invest in other people's lives and not invest in ourselves. That is a broken part of our spirit, our soul, our mind. You cannot buy love. If somebody loves you, they love you regardless of what you can do for them. And when you got your problems, you can't, you can't take yourself up and call anybody in Jamaica to say, here's the situation. Who's going to chump money together to send for you? Those of us who have people in Jamaica who are able to do this for you, bless you. But I don't take on anybody's problem. I am sick. I am hurt. I am. Sometimes I have to, when I have plans, because I have big plans in my life. When I have these big plans, I have great sacrifices. Sometimes you just have to say, we're, we're not going grocery shopping this week. We're going to, you know, command, be a commander and be out there in the field like a soldier. And we're going to say, okay, I can't do this now. I can't do this now. Okay, forget about this. I have to sacrifice so I can get what I want. Some of us, everything come to us easily. Some of us have to work hard. Some of us have to go through all kinds of embarrassing situations. Some of us have to humble ourselves as we're trying to pursue, you know, success, pursue, you know, a greater path for ourselves and our children. Some of us as adults, I'm speaking for myself, you know, I've had to go to work and put up with disrespect. I've had to go to people who are much younger than myself and had to learn how to humble myself. And where are these people when I'm in trouble, when I'm sad, when I'm sick? I've been ill for years, struggling with different health problems, you know? Never had a conversation with any of these people. Never saw them, you know? Never one time spoke to them when I had to take the ambulance to go to the hospital or was admitted in the hospital. Never saw any of these people. They know how to live without me. So eventually you have to learn how to live without them. Do you understand? So cry your tears, wipe your tears and get up. And if you're so weak and you can't say no, then change your number. Give yourself a time that I'm not giving you advice to cut off your family. I'm just saying if you're crying and you're so hurt, about the fact that they just take from you and they never think of you, then you are going to have to do something to insulate yourself, to protect yourself from them. Okay? People, those of you listening to this video, wise up. The people who do the least for us are the ones who expect the most of us. And we're always putting ourselves in a position where we have to be the bigger one, the better one, the, you know, maybe it does something for you to feel like you're needed. When you're a throwaway child like myself, you're always in pursuit of love, trying to buy love from people. And at the end of the day, you always find yourself crying. People are going to be ungrateful. It's just a thing in our culture, in our breed. You know, it, people are going to be wicked. People are going to be dismissive. People are going to be users. And some of these individuals want to separate you from your things or the possibility of who you can become. It's not the money they want. It's not the things they want. They want to make sure that even though you left, you shall not be better than them. See, see this negative thing in our people, you know, they call it bad mind. It's not always bad mind. It is a traumatic thing that lies within our people. Oh, you're the one that got away? Okay, I'll make sure that your life is no better than mine. And these are the ones that will remind you when you fall apart. That, well, you had opportunity that I'd never had. So you have to be smart. Move wisely. Speak less. Listen. And sometimes you have to play the game. You have to play dead to really hear and see people for who they are. I'm going to leave it like this for now and ask you all to stay blessed.